recently, I've been doing a lot of work on my house to remove the remaining pieces of the fossil fuel heating system, the last of which was the boiler, which I've replaced with a new one. Uh, but wait, it's not just any boiler, it's a zero emission boiler. And joining us today is Johan de Plessy, CEO and founder of Tepio, makers of the ZEB who's here to explain why it's a great low-carbon option as a like-for-like -like boiler replacement. So Johan, thanks for joining us today. Now, we featured the Zeb on the Fully Charged Home series when you spoke to Dan last year. And since then, I got obsessed with it and I've, I've now finally got rid of the LPG supply to my house and I've gone 100% electric because of the Tepio boiler. And then you came along to my house and put in a boiler and joined it up and it turned it on and it all works. And it was, you know, real, a, a real interesting jump. And it was that final step for me to get rid of, uh, well, I had LPG in a tank, you know, so to get rid of that was really important. So can you just give me the basics of how this works and what it is? Firstly, it's great to hear you say that it was a, it was a very simple process. We think so, um, and actually, that's really fundamentally wh where we started from with this, this journey developing this product. Is that we wanted to have something that was really a plug and play, or as close to a plug and play replacement for a fossil fuel boiler as we could get, but give you the same performance that you get from your current boiler, or better. So, so this is this is the Zeb here. This is you've got exactly the same one in your home. Yeah. Um, and you know it is as simple as you know, wheel the product into the house. Um, it connects up to the same flow and return pipes that your current boiler connects to. Um, connects to the electricity supply, um, and then it does the same job. And we get rid of your get rid of your gas boiler, get rid of your flue. Yes. Um, and you know there are no changes to the radiators. You know you you keep the same radiators, underfloor heating, or microbore, even if you have that in your house. Um, so really very flexible, um, just working with the existing fabric of the home. Yeah. I mean, I think that was the thing that really impressed me was, I mean, apart from the fact of actually getting, because it's quite heavy, isn't it? <laughs> but getting it, it in is, the house, yeah. was, was, a, was that was the big struggle, was getting it in the house. We had to go down a flight of steps to get in our house. But it was amazing. The, the, even the machine that brought it in was... Uh, We've got a really cool bit of kit. Right. Uh, yeah, it's like a little, a tiny little tractor. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a little sort of tract um, stair mover, so you yeah. can actually go up and down stairs. Yeah. Um, the units weigh about 375 kilograms at the moment. Um, so they are heavy, but not not, you know, not excessively heavy. Yeah. It's certainly lighter than the Argy you've got. That's true. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, we can get it into most places in, in the home, but it does need somewhere to go on the floor. It is a floor-mounted product. So then, so is it sort of suitable for most homes? I mean, because that, that was the, the thing that was impressive was, you know, we had existing plumbing from dating from 30 years ago you know, that was in the, in the house and what, you know, were we going to strip all that out and change everything? And we didn't have to do anything. It was like, we moved, we changed about that much pipe. <laughs> it was very, very little uh, adaption to fit this in. So yeah. as you say, it was designed to fit in with existing plumbing. It's not the answer for every home. Right. And yeah, heat pumps are a great solution for decarbonizing heat. You know, I'm, I'm very clear on that. But for many homes where there isn't the space uh, to put a heat pump or potentially it's too disruptive for the home, um, this is a pretty good option. A very good option for smaller homes in particular. Right. So this current model is really designed for homes that use up to about 12,000 kilowatt hours of gas. Well, that's about 1,000 to 1,100 litres of oil a year in terms of their heating demand. Um, and so for those medium to, to small homes, actually, this is a very simple alternative. Right. Um, and actually, we can get pretty much to cost parity with a, with a gas boiler and a heat pump. Right. Um, because, uh, I mean, that's all changed, will have even since you installed mine, that has changed dramatically. I mean, the price of gas has gone off the scale, the price of oil has gone off the scale. It has, it has. And electricity is going up, but I mean, I, you know, I wonder how that's going to affect the running of this. Particularly because you can't get off-peak gas or off-peak oil. And you can <laughs> get off-peak, because I charged mine last winter with off-peak electricity, so it was yeah. naturally cheaper. Yeah, look, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a very different uh, scenario you've got with with gas and oil to electricity, and yeah, we're not going to go into the details of, of, of the electricity grid physics here. Right. But I suppose the 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 important thing really to note is that as we move towards having more renewables on the grids, that we're making the electricity greener. The key to that is flexibility, yeah. so that we can actually not just use electricity as and when we want it, but have that buffer, have that store, um, so that we're using electricity at the cheapest and the greenest times of day. Um, and that will support more renewables on the grid, which is ultimately where we need to get to. 
So the big question is, how does it work? Because what I know is I can charge my car and my hot water and my house battery at night on off-peak electricity. What, what do I do with this? How? How? How does it do it? So, so yes, I mean, in a nutshell, it works very simply. It's giving you hot water, and that's really mostly what the customer cares about, and it doesn't cost them a fortune. What really the product is doing is it's taking electricity from the grid, and it's charging a thermal core where it stores 40 kilowatt hours of energy very, very densely. And we then have a technology that enables us to get that out in a very controlled manner and put that into the water circuit. So if you imagine sort of the top two thirds of this is basically a thermal storage core. Right. Uh, and the bottom third is basically what you would see if you open up a boiler. Um, so it's a heat exchanger. We Pump. pass hot air over it and, and that heats up the water which goes out to your central heating and your hot water tank. It's a thermal store, but more than that, it, it is a boiler. You know, right. it is a boiler, um, but it is storing energy um, and that gives you the flexibility to basically decouple when you're consuming electricity from right. when you're using heating. Yes. And so if we can make those two things more independent, which is what we're doing with this product, we can support more renewable generation and use of lower cost and, 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 and greener electricity. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things I've noticed is when it's, so first thing in the morning, if I put my hand on it, it's not hot, the outside. So that, because you know, what people may wonder, oh, thermal, back, that sounds like this thing's going to be, <laughs> yeah. you'll burn yourself but it's really well contained in, inside there. Absolutely, Look, there are some thermal losses. Um, that's unavoidable with thermal storage, but you know, it is very, very well insulated. We've got, it, the actual core is only about this big in right. there. Um, so we're heating it to very, very high temperatures, but you're never gonna, I think 60 degrees is the most you'll ever feel on the outside, yeah. which is colder than a radiator, you know, so it doesn't, it's not gonna get super hot. Yeah, because I mean, the other thing I just wanna say to people who may be interested in this, is it definitely works because when, <laughs> when we first fitted it i think we, you've adjusted the temperature since then but the first time i i'd had a shower and i got grabbed hold of the heated towel rail which i've been you know i've had it for years it's not new and that's the other thing was all this equipment was already in the house so i didn't have to replace anything the towel was lovely and fluffy and warm that was nice yeah. but the, the, you know when we first turned it on the radiators were so hot it was amazing and then you adjusted it down it didn't need them quite as hot as they were yeah look, i mean you in in the app you can change the set points anything with 35 and 80 yeah. <laughs> and we, we <laughs> i think you know, that's just a case of, of changing the set point um so you know users can do that themselves. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a very good test in our house because I'm being married to an Australian who's used to Queensland temperatures in the winter. You know, yeah. she likes quite a warm house. I will, I'm not going to denigrate her in any way. She's an incredible, intelligent, emotionally mature woman, but she does like quite a hot house. And the, this, this does the job. It heats it up to the required temperature. That's what we like to hear. So then the way it's set up is the, the Zeb actually knows your tariff. I mean, it knows what tariff I'm on. Is that, is that right? It, it's kind of... It, it does. Um, it does require you to tell it, but, yes. but, um, but yeah. I remember telling. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't forgotten as well, which is good. You said, you said I, am, I am on an EV tariff. Yeah. Uh, you are on an EV tariff at the moment. Um, most people who are on flexible tariffs, the most widely available ones today are EVs, EV tariffs. Right. And that is going to change over the next few years as um, the changes within the electricity markets mean that there's we're trying to create more incentives for people to use electricity more flexibly. Yeah. Um, but yes, each customer has an app um, and you can set your tariff uh, in the app. You can even say how carbon or cost conscious you are. Um, and what the Zeb is then doing is each Zeb is internet connected. Um, and we have a cloud-based IoT platform um, where we do some machine learning and we are monitoring exactly how each Zeb is using heat over right. time. And that builds a, a very accurate forecast of exactly when you're gonna need heat over the next 24, 48 hours, but at a very granular level. And that then feeds into an optimization algorithm, which is, helps it decide exactly when is best the time to take electricity and how much right. um, electricity to take based on your specific tariff yeah. and, and your preferences. Um, so, so that really is the smart functionality that's coming into the Zeb that is what enables it to, to leverage um, cheaper electricity to make sure that heating your home doesn't have to cost you the earth. Yeah, which is getting increasingly <laughs> important. But I mean, I think the thing from my experience is it's doing stuff and I don't have to worry about, it. you know, it isn't like you have to have a degree in astrophysics and, <laughs> and electrical, electrochemical engineering to use this 
you know, it's it's doing a lot of it completely remotely. I don't do anything. I don't Absolutely. touch anything. Don't turn anything on or off. I should just I should just say if if the internet's not working for whatever reason, right. it doesn't stop working. So yes. it is able to work uh, as a, on a sort of standalone mode. Um, but yes. Ideally, it's, it's, it's working over the internet. Um, we are uh, constantly revising and updating and able to send over the air updates to, to all our fleets of Zeb out, out in the field um, so that we're you know, able to release new features and, and functions that you know, give you cool new things you can do with oh, the right, Zeb. Right, so it can update, the, so like the app can update and I can do more with it. Yeah, right. you know, we like to think of the Zeb as you know, always getting better. It's going to sit in your home for 20 years, but it's going to continuously get better. Right. Um, and you know, much, much like uh, you know, many famous car companies like Tesla, for example, um, you know, we are able to do over the air updates. So we're constantly developing features and improvements with our software team um, and, and sending those updates out to the product to unleash new features and things, which you'll see happening, Just on, happening almost on, on a app. weekly right. basis at the moment. Right. And, that, and that'll appear on the app, so the app will be able to do more things. All Abs that sort of absolutely. Stuff. Right. So it's it, it's a bit like my EV charger then, which we, you know I can set to either charge at night on off-peak or just take the solar because I've got ground-mounted solar on solar on the roof. Is it aware of those sort of things and can take advantage of excess solar going into the grid, for instance? Yeah, so I mean, you've now got a quite a big solar array at your house, and, and, and you know, a lot of people increasingly have solar on their roof. Um, and so, yes, if you have excess solar in the day, you can, it can automatically dump it into, into the Zeb and store that energy rather than giving it back to the grid. So then in terms of servicing, I know my gas boiler needed servicing every year. What about this? Does this need servicing? Well, there's no regular servicing required. Um, there are, there's no gas or refrigerants that, that require that. Um, so there's no routine maintenance. Um, we do monitor it and you know, there will be some things that need to be replaced over time. But the guts of the Zeb, um, which last at least 20 years. And actually, that's a little thing. You know, there's been a lot of anxiety with people with batteries, you know, that they wear down. Does the, does the, uh, the thermal storage, does that decrease over time or does that just stay the same? Uh, no, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing about the, the technology that there's no degradation in the storage um, capacity. Right. So unlike with a battery, you know, over time it is going to reduce. Um, uh, 20 years time, it, it'll it's going to store the same of heat. amount of heat. Um, so, you know, that's why these products are going to have a long, long lifetime in your home um, and you're not replacing it, you know, on the frequency of a gas boiler or, or a battery, for example. Potentially, there's no need to ever replace your heating system, your, your, your heating system again, right. uh, your boiler again, well, except there might be like for pumps some of the or something else that, that yes, operate. Yes, un undoubtedly, there'll be, there'll be components in the bottom, there'll probably be some electronics and things that need to change over time, over the years, but um, very minimal. And then the other thing is, of course, these were on display at Fully Charged Live recently. They were. Was, but um, was it a success? Do you, uh, when I walked past, there was quite a lot of people talking to, to the team. It was brilliant, actually, you know, to be honest. And I, I, we had uh, people from across the business there actually answering questions. Right. Um, and I think it was great for them, really uplifting to see how much enthusiasm there is for, for this as a, as a product, but also increasingly for the heat decarbonisation space. You know, people, people understand now how they're going to decarbonise their, their, their transport. Yeah. How are they going to do it with heating? And actually, really good to see you know, more and more people talking about the space. And so we, yeah, we've got a huge amount of traction from it. Brilliant. Um, some, some sales and, uh, and it's really uh, a good launch pad for us. So. So that I'm so I'm so thrilled about it. I mean, it is an amazing product. I'm really thrilled with mine. I mean, where where can people find out more about this? Um, probably the best place is at our website, um, tepio.com, um, which is is it's quite short. Yeah. Um, and you know, you can sign up there for for the products. We're currently developing a combi boiler, um, so you know, the product is currently designed to work alongside a, an existing water tank. Um, but we've had so many people ask for a combi boiler, and loads of people have combi boilers. Um, so we are developing that at the moment. We hope to have that available by the end of 2023, so right. ne next year. And, and that's just so we to explain that that would heat your central heating and your hot water. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, exactly. So so a combi boiler does your central heating and instantaneous hot water. Right. Oh, so it's right. instead of having a water store. Yeah. Um, and effectively, we're using the storage within this um, right. to do that. I think it's a really, it, I just love the idea that there was another alternative to heat pumps, because I think I absolutely agree with you. I think heat pumps are critically important. Yeah. But this is such an important idea and storing heat. 
I think people get it, you know, go, oh, I'd like to store some meat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great thing to be able to do. That's yeah. really good. Thank you so much. Um, that's all we've got time for on this episode. Uh, but all the links to, to Tepio are in the show notes of this episode. Um, please do subscribe to the Fully Charged Plus channel because we're going to have loads of really interesting stuff coming along here soon. Uh, but that's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>